Hey guys, welcome back. This is our third and final day of the Awaiting the Promise series and it has been really uh, a powerful set of discussions so far. The first two, two nights um, we would have discussed what it is to be in the wait. We had the Pintos with us on that first night and on the second night, last night, we had Holly McFarlane of For the Child Foster Care Program uh, to talk about adoption and foster care as an option or as options to consider uh, as we wait, as we wait. So, you know, we really pray that those two sessions would have would have been blessings to you. Definitely blessed us. Yes, for sure. Uh, and as we come into day three, this final night, this final discussion, uh, we have Patrice Gilman with us and she has a testimony. <laughs> you know, she has quite a testimony to share with us about receiving the promise of God. She would have also gone through her own journey. And yeah, I'll, I'll just let her share yeah, that. Let's, let's not spoil it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll let her share that. But um, let us start with a word of prayer, Mr. Mac. Okay. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for your purpose and your plans that are perfect, Lord. You yes. have orchestrated this meeting before we even thought about it, Lord. And yes. so we thank you. We pray your blessing on everyone who will watch, who is watching now. We pray your covering over the technology that it will hold. We come against any distractions, any and with challenges in the name of Jesus and we pray Lord that this will be a time spent in fellowship in reverence and honor of you and that Lord we will just share openly and freely yes, and that you will be glorified and we pray that those who are waiting for the fulfillment of a promise Lord that they will wait well yes Lord. we pray Lord that you will just continue to use your people for the works that you've called them to do in Jesus name amen amen all right so uh before we jump in with patrice mrs gilman uh we in case you missed our announcement the last two nights we will be going into a 40 day prayer um challenge yes 40 days of prayer <laughs> each day for 40 days starting this wednesday the, the 25th of august we will be jumping on live at 6 30 a.m uh, for 15 to 20 minutes just to share with you from this book uh draw the circle the 40-day prayer challenge by mark Batchison. uh we have put the link to the book and the journal in our bio so you can check it out if you're interested but it's not a requirement for you to have yeah. them to join the challenge it's just because we'll be reading from the book right, right. yeah so it's, it's just a, a recommendation so um we are inviting you to join us for for that challenge to circle in prayer what it is that the lord is calling you to focus on for this season yeah, of your life i mean it's so what we have found and this is how we've seen the lord work there are times when you need a breakthrough or you want to hear from the lord on something just double down in prayer for a yeah. season and I think 40 days praying over one thing for 40 days will definitely or I'm definitely expecting to come out of this season with a clear word and direction about whatever it is the Lord may choose for us to you know circle because what we're doing is the same thing we did before where on the first day we let the Lord lead and say what we'll be praying for for 40 days so right so wait. so guys look out just stay tuned to our page for the details on it we'll be sharing it sharing it. So that we are tonight's discussion oh my gosh i'm so excited guys can you tell <laughs> so uh patrice is here i've just invited her invited her to uh to join us Hello. Hey. Hello. Yes. <laughs> All right. So let's just jump right in. Please tell the tell the people a little bit about you. <laughs> who is Patrice. Um, I'm Patrice. I 
was born in Kingston. I now live in Winnipeg, Canada. Um, I I went through this this journey not knowing where it would have taken me or what it what it would do for others, and I think God is using me to encourage others that may be struggling with the infertility and struggling with um, wanting a child and, and it's just not happening. Um, I'm 33 and going through that journey has definitely made me wonder why am I going through so many things at this age and why does it have to feel this hard so soon in life? Yeah. And yeah, it's 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 really hard, and I've been probably challenged with my body um, since I was probably eleven. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I've 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 been walking this road of pain and disappointment, and it's hard, but but um, I overcame. Amen. Amen. All right. So we're going to we're going to give you the opportunity to expound on on all of that, right? Mm-hmm. But you are also a worshiper, right? I am. You are I am. Leader. And I think I am. that's a significant thing um, for us to mention here tonight. It is not. Yeah. That's a big deal. <laughs> let's, let's just mm-hmm. put it that way. It, it's. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it means something to me because one of the things the Lord said to us in our wait is worship while you wait. So yeah. that's yes, so that wor- worship is a part of the journey um, for us as Christians, right? Um, so the, before we start talking about the infertility part of it, share share with the audience a little bit about just how you came to be to be a Christian. Yeah. Well, um, I was I was I was brought up in a Roman Catholic home. Um, it wasn't very. It wasn't very. It wasn't. You will be fine. And um, very frivolous, promiscuous life. I was out there. I had no boundaries. I did not respect God. I, I didn't have any reverence or anything like that until um, I I think I was about 25, 26 there about. Um, I left my parents' home and I um, started living on my own. And Things just, my, my, I feel like my, my life started to fall apart. I um, worked as a general manager and the job was, was overwhelming. I was doing my master's and paying for that out of pocket. I, you know, was no paying rent, was no paying, you know, car payment. I was doing everything on my own. And it started to take a toll on my mind. Um, I remember one day I was at I was at work, and the last thing I remember, Renee, was sitting in front of the computer putting in some information, and the next time I came to my senses, I was standing on the side of the road. I had no idea how I got there, and um, I started. I went to I went to the doctor because I started getting severe panic attacks. And when I, I kept going, I went to Andrews, I went to uh, Medical Associates week after week. And the last time, I think it was, it was the fifth time, the doctor said to me, um, he suspects that I'm developing mental health issues and that I need to, I, I need to seek, I need to seek help. And I think that was the turning point for me. A friend of mine, Rebecca Stubbs, I'll forever be grateful for her introduced me to Pentecostal church. It was something very foreign to me because if anyone on this platform understands what it means to grow up Roman Catholic, it means that nothing else matters and nobody is not even but we Catholic people. 
That's how we were taught. And so it was very foreign to me, but my soul was so desperate for something. And she brought me to Eastwood Park, New Testament Church. Reverend Sims was a pastor at the time. And when I entered the church, it's almost like my spirit felt like I was at home. And I laid on that altar for about two hours, just crying. I was so empty. I was so broken and I was so lost. I was searching for something that no amount of um, boyfriend or drinking or partying could have filled that void. And uh, I gave my life to Christ January 24th, 2014. And I've never looked back. I've never looked Amen. back. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. And you know, Amen. when he shared with me that it was 2014 that you got saved, I was like, yes, Jesus. It was the same year that I got saved. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. He was very yes. from his, in his life. So, you know, mm -hmm. uh, we're on this journey together. Yes. So, so you got saved in 2014. And I did. When did the infertility journey begin for you or that that? series of I got saved in 20 in January 2014 and um I was single I had no I when I when I when I came to God and I want to make a note about this I want people to understand something when I came to God I had no I I negotiated nothing I just wanted to feel whole I didn't say to God, oh God, you see, Phil, you see, I come to you, I want a husband, I want this. I, 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 I had no desire, and I'm not even pretending. I had no desire. I was so broken. All I wanted was to feel whole again. So I had no desire for marriage, no desire for children, no desire for anything. Like I just wanted to feel like a whole person without this brokenness within me. And... Uh, God is such a God of, of, of suddenly. I got baptized January 24th. Um, I started this new job with the government in March. And on March 24th, I met my husband through a friend or a random conversation. I was telling her that I'm tired. I really love it if somebody could not rub my feet. And she was like, you know, I know somebody. And <laughs> I really, that was it. Yeah, I really, that was it. I met my husband on the 24th of March, and um, we got engaged in September. And um, I migrated to Canada in November, and he went to the Middle East to work in December of that same year, 2014. And we maintained a long distance relationship until 2015, December, when we got married. So my fertility treatment really, our process didn't really start until 2016 when my husband moved to Canada because we never lived together prior. Yeah. Um, however, when I was 24, I found out that I had really bad fibroids. Mm -hmm. I did not know. Um, I had really bad menstrual cramps at um, age 11. And uh, started at age 11, and every time I went to the doctor, it was, all, it was always, oh, uh, when you have a child, it will all go away. They, they did nothing. They just gave me painkillers for it and so. So when I was in Montego Bay working, and a friend of mine was visiting me, Nadine, and I, it was the morning, and I was trying to get out of bed, and I couldn't move. Mm -hmm. I, was like, I think something is wrong with me I, I, I can't move my legs, something is wrong I can't move and she was like what do you mean? I said I don't know what's happening but like I'm in serious pain and I just can't walk she eventually took me to Kingston and I went to the emergency room and the doctor was saying it's either I'm five months pregnant or I have really huge fibroids and, and she did the ultrasound and she found that I had really huge fibroids mm -hmm. And based on what she was telling me and my family history, it seems like I've been having I, these growth spurts of fibroids since I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. And that is why I've, I've always had those bad menstrual cycles. Because the first fibroid I removed was like the size of a jelly coconut. Mm -hmm. So it was really huge. And um, I did that surgery in October of 2011. Um, so I... 
I've been struggling with my own body from them time. Right. And now when I'm now meeting my husband, this is when it now, you know, magnified and became a greater, because I wasn't trying to have a child before. Right. So it didn't really matter. It's just, I was just always in, in intense pain. And so I just wanted to get rid of that. So I started, you know, I did a surgery to remove the fibroids. The doctor did tell me that it would have, um, it, it, it would grow back in five years. So we started trying to have um, children in 2016. And when I started... I have to go back to the doctor because I recognize the period pains came back. And I started to feel the heaviness in my belly. I was like, okay, I think they're back. Mm -hmm. So I went to the doctor here and lo and behold, again, I have huge fibroids again. Mm -hmm. And I had to do another myomectomy, another major surgery. This was February of 2016. Um, all right, and the doctors are like, okay, you can start trying. They put me on letrozone and a couple of other hormonal pills that would help us to conceive. And it just never happened. By November, my period cramps were back and the fibroids were back again. Mm. And I had to do another major surgery in December of that same year. Wow. So that, was, that, that has been three surgeries in 2016. Um, we tried again since 2016 and nothing happened mm -hmm. i remember in 2017 i went to the doctor and um they kept putting us on the pills and thing and he looked at me and he said i don't know what else to tell you patrice but i think um you're experiencing unexplained infertility mm -hmm. because we have removed all the fibroids and we have given you all the meds and we have checked you and your husband out and everything should be working, but nothing seems to be happening. And they were very nice people. They were very nice people to me. And while I was, every time I went to the office, I always had a pleasant demeanor because I believe in the joy of the Lord. I believe that despite of what you're challenged with and what you're faced with there's always a blessing and a lesson in the story mm -hmm. so whenever I, when i go there and they you know they say because the doctors to be honest they don't talk about god they don't mm -hmm. talk about those things here they, they believe in the science and nothing is wrong with the science i believe in it too but i believe in god more mm -hmm. and they would say things like oh we don't know what to do and and you know unexplained infertility and i said to him um but god i said but god and he looked at me and he smiled and he said, um, wish you luck, Patrice. And um, <laughs> I kept it moving. Wonderful. He's a wonderful man. I, I, I can't knock him. may not be a believer, but Jesus, he's a good doctor, good fertility doctor. So um, we kept trying and nothing happened. So he said, okay, let's upgrade the treatment to level two. Level two is interuterine what's it called IUI interuterine something I don't remember the name where it's almost like huh? interuterine insemination insemination that's it girl and so I was like okay we're gonna we're gonna try that so in February March April in February of 2019 we decided that we were going to try IUI and we went and because because my oof, my 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 uterus has been bent out of shape because of these huge fibroids they were never able to see my ovaries yeah. so whenever they were about to do any tests it, it wasn't a regular ultrasound where they could see the ovaries and do, I, ha, I I always had to do a blood test and cup a blood test where they take so much like so much blood from me. So that in itself like really wore me down physically. And uh, we found out that we were pregnant. And it was such an exciting time. 
it was almost like I was beside myself because this was something brand new I've been praying about and it's happening to me right now. The test is here and it's happening. Um, when you get pregnant, they don't usually see you till six weeks, six weeks after that pregnancy test. Mm -hmm. And I went to the doctor at the six weeks mark. I was excited. I couldn't call the excitement i was sharing it with my cousin and my mom and i really couldn't hold it my best friends i couldn't i couldn't hold it because all of them played such an important part in 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 helping me maintain my sanity through through this process and when i went to the doctor they asked that i would bring our blood test because they want to see the hcg level You have to do another blood test today and then we'll see if the numbers are increasing or if they're decreasing. If they're increasing, that means, you know, your goal is just that it's probably early pregnancy and, you know, developing a little later. If it's decreasing, it's, it's just the unlikely fact that you're miscarrying. And I did the blood test and, of course, it was decreasing. And I'm telling you, it was the most devastating thing that I ever experienced like like I've heard people say that they had miscarriages before I experienced my own and it meant it it I didn't understand I didn't understand the impact I really didn't understand the mental impact that it has on someone and I was so devastated because I'm saying, God, but my pray for this. But backstory, I remember when I just moved to Canada, I was sitting, I lived in a little country area, a rural area. And I was praying. I, I created a prayer wall and I was praying. And I was praying to God about my fertility issues. This was as I um as I met Winston while we were courting and we were getting married the next year. And I was praying to God about my fertility issues. And I remember distinctly the Lord saying, your child will be born in April. Mm -hmm. And I held on to that. He didn't say what year, but I remember he said April. So when I got pregnant in February and I had the miscarriage, I think though it was devastating, I remember when the Lord said that. He was going to tell my child to be born in April. If I'm pregnant in February, my child would, would be born in April. He was born in November. Mm -hmm. So that kind of helped me to, it's weird, that it helped me to not mourn as hard as I could have. Because I, I really believe the voice of God. Like, I believe it with every single thing in me. So when I was experiencing the miscarriage, it was hard because I live here in Canada by myself, my husband, you know, me and my husband alone. And I booked a ticket immediately and I went, I went to Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And um, I did a DNC because you have to do a DNC when they realize that you're miscarrying. And So guys, we apologize for the for the breaks in the technology. Uh, we we pray for the Lord's covering over over Patrice's connection. So she will be she should be coming back very soon. Yeah. Oh, you hearing me now? Yes, we're yes, hearing you now. now. Where did I leave you? Where? Right after you mentioned coming back. Right. Yeah. Okay. So um, so I have to do a DNC. Right. You may hear that part, yeah. Right. Here before, and um, they tried to get the sack out because it wasn't growing, the sack was empty. And uh, they didn't get everything, and I didn't know, and the doctor didn't realize. So three days later, while I booked my flight, I was on my way to Jamaica, 
I started experiencing contractions in the plane. Mm. I didn't know what was happening because I thought that the, the DNC would have removed everything. And I started to contract in the plane and it was intense. It's, it was so intense. I, I started sweating, like mm -hmm. I'm gripping the sides of the, the handles of the airplane seat. And I, and it was, it was April 6th. I remember it was my mother's birthday. I was surprising her too in Jamaica. And I, when I landed, I went to my grandmother's house. And this is an important thing too. The first thing someone said to me was, oh, when, so when, oh, when, oh, when you are so long, I have one baby. <laughs> On the day that I'm carrying my child. Yeah. Yeah. And um I when I went home, my brother took me home and you know, they held my hands and we I eventually passed it that night. And it was hard. I spent seven weeks, I think it was seven weeks in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Just to bring myself back to a place where I felt Anyways, I came I took it off my mind I went to Canada and I took it off my mind because one of the prayers that I prayed was to not allow me not having a child become an idol in my life and I was very, very careful of that because I often ask myself, if I don't have a child, does it mean that God is... If I don't have a child, does it mean that I won't live a fulfilling life? And I had to be very cognizant of how much energy I, 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 I placed in, you know, focusing on having a child, having a child, having a child. And I really forgot about it. And... I enjoyed my summers here. My summer here, I should say, sorry. And I woke up one morning around five and the Holy Spirit said to me, call the fertility clinic. It was a Thursday morning. I was like, God, oh my God, here we go again. I did this again. And he said, call the fertility clinic. So as I woke up, I sat up and the fertility clinic opened at seven. And I sat and I waited till seven o'clock and I called and I said, um, about 7.15, I should say. And I called and said, okay, you know, I'm a patient of Dr. So-and-so. Um, we did a IUI before and it failed. However, I would like to try again. And she was like, oh, when would you like to come in? But the clinic is very, very difficult to get in. It's the only fertility clinic here in Manitoba. So it serves an entire province. So usually when you call, you have a six months appointment. And um, she said to me, oh, we just had someone cancel. Can you come in on Monday? And I was like, sure. I was like, sure. So I went in on Monday, and when they did my blood test in the morning, they called me back in the afternoon. And they said, oh, you're peaking, you're fertile, your body is, is, is fertile now, so can we do the procedure tomorrow morning? And I want to be very honest and transparent. These processes are very expensive. It's not mm -hmm. covered by the government here. In some provinces, yes, I think in Ontario it is, but it's not covered here. So we took all of our money, all of our money, and paid that again. We did the procedure. We were so broke that... When we were done, the procedure, because the procedure was 7 o'clock on the Tuesday morning. When we were done and we left, I couldn't get a coffee at McDonald's. We were so broke because we, we believe that God is going to do something. Yeah. I got pregnant. And um, the, this time, it's almost like you're afraid to celebrate mm -hmm. because of what happened the last time. So though I was happy that, okay, all right, my body's functioning and this is happening. I was, I was very watchful that, Oh, 
there's a possibility that I could possibility that I could miscarry again. I um, started experiencing serious morning sickness. I had to the point that I had to stop working. I couldn't work. I had morning sickness for the entire nine months of my pregnancy. Yeah, it was it, it was um, born May seventeen. One second, Patrice. Patrice? Yeah. Can you, I, uh, I'm not sure where you are positioned in your home, but I think maybe part of the connection issue is maybe your, your proximity from your router maybe. I don't know if there's another spot that you could go closer to it or something, but something is really, it's, it's, it's hard to hear yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, we're getting a lot of breaks in the connection. Hope you're you know? we're, we're hearing you, so it, it, will, it will be smooth for maybe three to four minutes, and then you'll pause for 30 seconds. And then oh, okay, so okay, it, it's okay. Right. All right. okay, I took it off my Wi-Fi spot, so I'm mm -hmm. just going to use my data, my phone. Are you sure you have enough data to go through the rest of the mm -hmm. life? Mm -hmm. Okay, all okay, right. Awesome. So um, while, while we're taking this little break, let me just address a, a couple of comments. So yeah. a few persons, so someone would have asked um, or would have said that this needs to be saved. It will be saved. It will be on our page and we'll also upload it to our YouTube channel. So it will be there um, as of tomorrow morning. Yeah. So you can always share it. Um, and then a few comments came in for you, Patrice, as you were sharing, you know, persons were saying how um selfless you were during this time that you were experiencing experiencing these challenges and how humble mm. you you were through it all so i i want to acknowledge the persons in the comments and yeah and just also yes there we go and just also ask you to, to share a, a little bit about what has what kept you in that space of of humility yeah. and and worship but finish the story and then we'll get into that okay so the doctor said that my baby would have been born may 17 and um there's a part of or faith that a lot of people don't talk about a lot, and it's a spiritual warfare that you experience when promises on your life. Yes. And I remember when I was pregnant with Samuel. Samuel is my son's name, and I, I had to name him Samuel because it's 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 perfectly fitting. I remember when I was I was pregnant with Samuel on three different occasions while I was pregnant. I saw three witches in my dream that came and said they came for the baby mm -hmm. three times. So my pregnancy was not a pregnancy that I could um, get up and take the pictures and do the social media fanfare and the exact, it was a warfare for me. It was serious warfare for me. And keep in mind, guys, that while I'm going through this, before I got pregnant, Sunday after Sunday, I'm leading worship at church. And I show up. I show up. I show up every day, and it 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 it's it it's it's very hard when you have a mountain before you, and you feel so alone in a fight, and you don't know if your voice can make that mountain crumble, yes. if your one voice can make that mountain crumble. Yes. Yes, I know that. And uh, I was, when, you see, when I decided to serve God, guys, it wasn't, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a temporary solution to a temporary feeling. Like I was just feeling like 
a, a little broken now. So I got just turn Christian and then once I feel a little bit better, I just gone back and I go down and I'm back again. I'm a dare road, I'm a this so I'm a have man and ask that it was not that for me. When I decided to serve God, it was a lifetime decision. What it aided me in that I have some of the best friends around me. Your community is important. The people who you talk to every day, <laughs> they mold you. They determine how you speak. They determine how, what, what your faith level is. Yeah. They, 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 they really more, they, they, they say you're an average of the five people that you talk to. And it is so true. And they help you in the warfare. They help you to and fight. They help you. In the warfare. I remember when I was going through my fertility struggle, a friend of mine, my, one of my dearest friends, bought a, bought a bag of baby clothes for me, prophetically. Mm -hmm. And sent it. And I don't think she understood the impact that that had on my faith. Mm -hmm. To know that I was not the only one was believing. Mm -hmm. She was believing with me. And she was in a place that she has no children, she has no husband. But she believed for me and with me. It's so important to have that accountability and those people around you who help you to navigate the valleys, to navigate the hard times. And so I go back, going back to the story now. The doctor said I was going to have baby on in May. And I was like, God, me. But he said, April, God, could this be another miscarriage? Mm -hmm. Because I believe that you said April. And throughout the pregnancy, my fibroids started to grow back while I was pregnant. Mm -hmm. So I started to have not only morning sickness, but serious pain. And I remember I went to the doctor and, and I was telling her what I'm experiencing. And she looked at me and she said, you know what? She said, you know what? I got all this morning and I was thinking, I'm going to let you have the baby a month early because I don't want you to go through. <laughs> Oh my God. I don't want you to go through any more pain yeah. for much longer. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And she said, you know what? We're going to do a scheduled C-section on April 17th. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> my God. My God. <laughs> Guys, I want you to believe God. Yeah. Believe. I want you to be radical, very radical about what you're believing God for too. I remember every morning while I was in the shower, I would cup my belly and would say, Lord, I thank you for my baby before I was even pregnant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would hold my tummy and I say, Father, I thank you for this child because he's coming to change nations. He's coming to be a promise. Well, yes. And I was very radical about it. One of the things that I did that my friends here laughed at me, every time I went to Walmart or anywhere and I see the pregnant spot, that's where I parked. <laughs> I love that. I love I that. You cannot tell me that me not pregnant. You cannot tell me say I'm not having a child. I park for the pregnant people. I do. I I, I go in the pregnant people line, I and that. I believe it. I love That's that. right. I, love that. I have to believe it. I have to walk in this prophetic realm because. If it's my feelings alone, it wouldn't have happened. I would just probably lay down in defeat. And so, um, COVID struck in December here. We started having cases here in March, I believe. And um, in March, the government here started rotating the doctor's shifts. So they will work two weeks on and two weeks off, two weeks on, two weeks off. So... A week before, two weeks before I had baby, my doctor told me that, unfortunately, the one that walked me through fertility was my OB straight through, held my hand, wonderful doctor, Dr. Appleby. She said to me, unfortunately, that the week that I will be having baby, they schedule her off. Mm -hmm. And she said, um, I don't know who they'll have to do your, your surgery, but... Um, 
here's my number and here's my email address doctors here don't do that mm -hmm. they don't give out personal information jamaica is a little bit different you can be close to the doctors but here you sh you, you don't doctors don't give out their numbers and email addresses as you said email me or text me if anything Anyways, um, the morning of April 17th came, and I remember that the surgery date should have been, surgery time should have been midday. So I was in bed about six o'clock. My husband went to work. I heard my, um, I heard my phone ring at around 6.15, and it was a hospital, and they were saying, oh, are you here at the hospital? Your surgery is at seven. Uh, um, are you here? And I was like, I thought it was at midday. They're like, no, it's at seven. But be before I hung the phone up, I heard my front door open and my husband walked in and he was like, oh, they just found a COVID case at his workplace that I had to close the plant down. And I was like, I guess it's perfect. I guess I can come now because it's home now. So I went. And when I went, it was all new faces. I didn't recognize anybody. I've been going to this clinic for nine months and I just didn't recognize anybody, all new people. So I said, okay, God. Yeah, for all it out with me, no one because this is new to me again. And um, I remember the doctor trying to give me the epidural, and he was he was doing it for so long, like about thirty minutes, and I couldn't understand what was happening. Anyways, he said he was done, and they started the surgery. But when they started cutting, I started feeling it. And so I said to them, no, 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 I'm feeling this. And they're like, are you feeling it? They said, well, the epidural seemed to have failed, so they'll have to put me under general anesthesia. And they did. When they put me under general anesthesia, they punctured my lungs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, so what could have taken... 30 minutes took three and a half hours. Wow. They punctured my lungs. I had an anterior placenta, meaning the placenta was on the, the, the front of my belly, right on my, my, na my navel. And Samuel was breached at the top. Mm -hmm. And so it was very difficult for them to get to Samuel. Plus I had the fibroids at the base of my cervix. So it was very difficult for them to get to Samuel. So I lost 2.5 liters of blood and I was just unstable. Um, they couldn't get me back to, they couldn't stabilize me. So they came out and told my husband that, they told Winston that they don't know what else to do. They have done everything they could. They're, the only thing they can do is put me up in ICU and they don't know what else to do because they have tried everything. Um, it was after the surgery now that the doctor who did the surgery, an old lady from Turkey, very old doctor, she came to the room after and she was like, um, a miracle happened in the, in, the, in, the, um, in the operating room. So I said, what do you mean what happened? Because at this point, my husband didn't tell me what happened. Mm -hmm. So she said, your, your lungs, was, your, your, we, we punctured, your, your right lung was punctured because the tube went down too far. And we couldn't stabilize you. But the minute we were doing the last test to send you out, send a report up to the to the doctor in ICU, your lungs miraculously came back up. Wow. We don't know what happened. We, we don't know, but she 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 said you're one lucky gal, but we know that mm -hmm. we serve a big God that is bigger than luck. Amazing yeah. God. So um, I had to get a blood transfusion too. And uh, I was in the hospital for a little over a week, I believe. And I think what was challenging for me, it, I was so tired coming out of surgery because so many things happened and I was in surgery for so long. Um, it, 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 I, it did something to me where even for, like I was so disconnected. Mm -hmm. For three weeks, I called my son Auntie Baby. Mm -hmm. I was so different. I could not believe. I, I, it's almost like I couldn't fathom that this is my child. Yeah. I have no memory of the first week to two weeks of his life. No memory of that. And so 
Um, this wasn't now in the middle of the pandemic. This is April and the pandemic is raging mm -hmm. in Canada now. And uh, once again, I have no family here but my husband. And in the, middle, in the middle of a pandemic where nobody could come over because there was a point when there was no visitation allowed. The government allowed no visitation. You can't, you can't go to anyone's home right. here. And so nobody could come visit. And keep in mind, I got a C-section. So there's a lot of things I had to do on my own. Mm -hmm. Coming out of the hospital, having a young baby, having a C-section in the middle of a pandemic. It was really challenging. And I think... With all of that, I still had a young marriage mm -hmm. and I was still navigating my marriage. Mm -hmm. And I don't think a lot of people speak about the challenges that you face in your marriage with your husband while trying to have a family. Yeah, we, we had to do a whole video on yeah. that because yeah. it it is very real. Yeah. But continue, yeah. please. <laughs> it, it, it is very real. And there were so many odds stacked against us. And the dynamics, the dynamics worked us crazy. Because here we are in this very cold country. Winnipeg can get up to minus 50 on a, on a regular winter day. Very cold country. Um, my husband moved here from having a solid job in the Middle East to come here to work at Walmart. Mm. My husband is an engineer wow. and he moved here to stock produce on the shelves at Walmart. The frustrations and the depressions happened. We were trying to learn ourselves in this new space while learning each other. Yeah. And it was very challenging. But I I hold on to my vows. And I decided that I'm not letting it go. Yeah. Amen. There were days when it was hard. There were days when I had no answers. There were days when I had no idea where I'm at. But once again, the community always shows up. Yeah. God always sends someone to hold our hands through these seasons. And so, even while going through this, you know, people, you see, in every group, there's always someone that they see as a strong one. <laughs> and the bittersweet thing is, sometimes I'm always seen as a strong one in my, in my circle, friendships. And some days when I'm going through, I will get a text or a call. Um, oh, Patrice, you know, you know, I'm going through this or I'm going through that. And, you know, could you pray for me? And... I have to forget about me mm -hmm. and remember the reason why I'm a Christian. It's not just for me. It's to serve God's people. That's right. And so I had to learn how to become very selfless. It's almost I had to abandon myself, my thoughts, sometimes my feelings and my emotion and do what presents itself in front of me. And sometimes I often ask, is this a test? Is God testing me to see how faithful I am, how obedient I am? Can we share a thought on that? Because we, <laughs> we've been through that as persons who serve in several ministries as well, right? And you, you go in and you have, you, you are having a very rough time. But mm -hmm. persons are calling on you and pulling on you. You know what the Lord showed us about that? Sometimes it's by design. But yes. He said you have to forget about you and you deal with the person in front of you. 
And as you are dealing with the person in front of you, the Lord is dealing with you. He's handling, Absolutely. He's handling or, what you have. Or there is somebody interceding for you while you're interceding for somebody. Absolutely. And somebody standing in the gap. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it, it's just, he never, he never leaves us. And as we continue to faithfully serve him, he is taking care of our needs as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. And even throughout trying to conceive, this is one point I don't want to miss. It was hard for me because sex became like a chore, like, oh, I'm so tired between um, this day and this day. And, and, and because it wears on you emotionally and physically, and you're so exhausted. It's like, okay, we're going to have sex at six o'clock. Okay. All right, we don't know. Okay, tomorrow again because we're fertile during this week. And then after that, you're like, I'm too so tired to even look at you because it's not even a fertile season. So wait, we're wasting our time. Yep. That, like, let's just, let's just stop there. <laughs> I want people to understand yeah, that sex becomes something else. It, it does. Not what you look, it, it's not what you looked forward to in marriage anymore. Yeah. It becomes a task, something yeah. to, to, to check off. It ruins the experience because yes. it's almost like you're doing it, but you're like, what's the point if it doesn't end the way that the way I want it to end? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and so with with that, we just want to kind of caution persons who may be trying or you're about to try or you're Watch planning to start trying to, to nurture your relationship, nurture your intimacy. Mm -hmm. It's important yes. because if it gets if it gets to the point where it's broken during that time of, of trying, it takes it takes much longer to heal than it the took to break it. It's crazy because yes, especially if you would have built up in your head that sex is how you build intimacy. Mm -hmm. right. So you could have this when it starts to shift because when you're trying it becomes a task like you're trying for a baby like before sex used to be for pleasure we love each other we want to be with each other now it's like okay we need this result so we have to do this task yeah. yes. and sometimes for months and years later the impact is still there in your marriage because you know that that thing that was meant to bring you closer it's it's not doing the same thing anymore. Mm -hmm. And so you're actually in some cases turned off from having sex, which then oh, ruins together. your your intimacy, your communication. You you don't look mm -hmm. forward to being with each other in the same way anymore. And a lot of things just break down. That's true. That is so true. That is so true. And I, I had to recognize that, but it really took honesty. It took Honesty, like I had to be honest with myself. So Patrice, like after a while, um, I have to realize that Patrice, are you being selfish? Are you being selfish? You still have a marriage to steward. Are you being selfish? Are you just trying to get a baby and then what happens after that? You still have a husband. You still have a marriage. Yes. You know, and the impact that whatever I I I was doing now it could. It, you know, it could have lasting effects, as you were saying. And so, so I, wanted to, I wanted to share that part of it because that's a very big part that a lot of people don't talk about because I guess maybe some people find it taboo. Mm -hmm. They don't talk about that part of it. And another thing I wanted to make mention of is for people to stop asking people when they're having children or if they're not going to have another child or... <laughs> Like, 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 stop going on my womb. Like, you have no idea what I'm experiencing. Yeah. You have no idea what I'm experiencing. You have no idea what my home, how, how my body is, is, is acting. You have no idea the dynamics in my home. You have no idea. Having a child is not just to put in cute, cute ribbons and, 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 mm -hmm. and, 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 mm -hmm. cute and all of that. It's not that. Mm hmm this is a whole person's life you have in your hands to steward to 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 ensure that this person grow in the likeness of christ you have to carry them you have to carry you have to hold them hand you have to you have to raise them while you try to navigate your own life and your own responsibility life. It's a big responsibility 
So I'm just encouraging people on the live, even if you're tempted, please don't. Just don't ask people about children. Some people have no desire. Yeah. Some people have the desire and it's just not happening. So allow people to live their own lives the way they choose to do it. Just allow them that and don't bombard them. I remember while um people when I would when I would go to church, people always ask me, Oh, so when and I go and I would when I go to church, I would sit in the parking lot and I would wait till everybody go in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody asked me nothing. Don't ask me anything. You have no idea how disappointed I had. I, I was last night when I when I woke up in the middle of the night and saw that I had my period. Don't ask me anything else. Don't ask me anything. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, so just be very mindful of the conversations and how sensitive it can be for someone who is struggling. Someone who may have to. I met someone here. She had to remove her uterus because she was raped as a young girl. Nobody knew her when she was a young girl, and nobody sees her with a child. And every time they see the lady, they ask the lady about a child. You have no idea about people's story. Yeah. So be very mindful of how we ask people about these sensitive things if you're not close to them and if you are close to them you would know what they're what the desires of their hearts are so you wouldn't even have to ask the question so just refrain refrain from asking about children and when the child is going to get a sibling or if you're going to get another child please just refrain from it so it, it I'll, I'll i'll add as well persons need to understand is it makes the challenge harder to overcome it does it it puts it puts mm -hmm. pressure on the person it it makes them dread interaction it makes yeah. them not look forward yeah. to being in public it makes them yeah. very conscious about what they do not have yeah yeah and it it it, it alienates them and even though that's not the intention that is the result so, so, you know, when we're talking about it on these platforms and we're saying, please stop, just, you know, understand that we're asking you to stop because as persons who are going through it, this is how it feels. This is how it is received, mm -hmm. even if it's not how it's and, intended. And it's the same for persons who are single and you're asking them when they're getting, when they're married. getting married. Right? married. And um, so I'm seeing in the comments where persons are mentioning the, the, the pity Mother's Day greetings. So... I <laughs> I know what you mean. They're they're referencing the the oh you're a mother already or Listen you're to me. you're a mother to so many. Um, it's not the same thing. So you know we understand the sentiment and, and and it's actually the same for men as well because I mean there's such an expectation for a man. The basic expectation of a man is to be able to to make a child. Mm -hmm. Like that, that even even those who aren't in a position to take care of the child, the basic yeah. expectation yeah. is that you can create yeah. one, and so mm -hmm. it's 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 crazy. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think yeah. my my husband stopped talking to many people at church because of the questions. He just does avoided them at all. A, a at church all is supposed to be a safe space. <laughs> It's supposed to be, it's supposed, to be, supposed, to be yeah. supposed to be, but it, it's not. It's not always a safe space yeah. because people have these expectations of you because you're married, a child is next. They, right. they just automatically think, oh, we're married yesterday, so when the baby will come? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so it's just, it's, I find it inappropriate, I find it insensitive, and I just want people to stop. Yeah. To, to really stop. Yeah. So, guys, uh, are there? <laughs> I, I can't believe it's an hour. You know, do you have crazy. do you have any questions for Patrice? If you do, just drop those in the comments. But um, and while you do that, yeah, I'm, I'm seeing the agreements and the questions, uh, um, the the comments about the 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 children and persons asking. Like, you have two already, and I'm asking you when when you have any more. Or I have a boy. Where's the girl? You have a girl. Where's the boy? Where's the boy? Yeah. It's or you're you're 36, so when the husband and children come in, like yeah. guys, guys just stop. Yeah, yeah just so, stop. Um, yeah. Were Were there any other points you wanted to to share so, on the journey? So you would have 
you would have um, healed from the punctured lung and mm -hmm. you know came out of came out of hospital you were able to well you, you're not able to remember the first week or two of being home with your with your son Samuel but mm -hmm. your you you were able to to get through that with the support of of community yeah um, i was able to get through however i struggled with postpartum mm -hmm. i had a postpartum depression um it's not something that a lot of people would would expect me to experience because um always the encourager mm -hmm. and always the life of the party and always you know encouraging but I experienced it and I experienced it very hard. Mm -hmm. I had to I had to see counsel for it. And um it was hard because here we are, okay, here we are praying for this baby. We have never had a child before, none of us, my husband and myself. We now have this promise. It 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 didn't stop there. Our lives now had to change. We had to now take on a different perspective. And my, my husband had to learn how to be a father. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had to learn how to be a mother. And a wife. And, and a wife. And I, think that, and I think this is also something that a lot of people don't think about. Many of us come from dysfunctional, traumatic homes yeah. as children and sometimes the example of parenting and marriage that we saw growing up is so dysfunctional and traumatic and we don't know now how to navigate that now with my new family okay we used to see my father my mother and now you have a child in the play you find yourself i call it relapse relapsing to that behavior because it's familiar it's there it's there it's there it's the only example you have yeah so my husband and i had to we we, we, are, we are trying it's not the easiest thing mm -hmm. and i can tell you that openly our marriage has been hard many many days because in his mind how he saw his parents um is normal to him mm -hmm. what did my head say i'm madness that like, <laughs> and oh, he saw my parents, it's normal to me, but he's he saying, no, but that's a killing thing. It's like, oh, you know what I mean? So, so we have to try to now use the Bible and the faith and the word and going to church and try to use that as a foundation of parents. From scratch. You have to learn it from scratch. Mm -hmm. And then I had this. I had this challenge that I think it I think it plunged me into depression. It was the fact that when I came home with Samuel, I was searching for Patrice and couldn't find her. Mm -hmm. Like I had to like where is Patrice? Like where is the person that get up, put on her clothes and just drive to the States because she wanted to? She want wings cross the border. Some of us drive across the border, they go, Why what's she gone? I'm want her back no car right now. I'm tired. I wanna go get some wings. I wanna go so can't do it. Cut my baby. And it really plunged me in a depression. Like the Patrice that I loved so much is is gone. Mm -hmm. And when I was do going through the counseling, the, the, she was like, you have to mourn the old you yeah. because you have now evolved into another person. You're a mother. So you have to, that person is kind of gone. Yeah. yeah. But it was so sudden for me. It really hit me hard. Yeah. Like my friends can tell you, a lot of them are on the live. I would go to Jamaica three times a year mm -hmm. just because I can't do it. I'm playing a fly. I just went. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to laugh for you because I still have more. <laughs> I, would, I, would turn, I would show up in Jamaica just because I can. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. I can't. 
Because every mo every morning when I wake up, I have to plan, oh, if I have to go there, okay, so Samuel. Of an appointment, oh, so Samuel. Oh, oh my my grandmother is sick, oh, but Samuel. But it's it's very hard for me. So, so add to that, um, you and your husband want some time alone. Oh, but Samuel. Oh, but Samuel. It it's Oh, we, we want to drive over up north to st somewhere. Oh, but who, like, yeah. somewhere, we're going to be the mother carry him. We and, never really want to be a money daddy. The, and we, you know, come to be a husband and, and it's during a pandemic. Yeah. And it's during a pandemic. So there's a, lot of, there's a lot of factors, a lot of dynamics attached to just having the child. Yes, I know many days when I started to complain after having Samuel, how tired I was. It's almost like a few people want me to feel ungrateful. I'm human and I get tired. It doesn't mean because I wanted this baby so badly that I can't complain about anything in the process. Listen, we're, we're tired right now. Like right now, we're tired. Yeah, it's seriously. Some of us sleep through the night for many months. It's exhausting. But what I want to leave with everyone is that learn how to steward your suffering. Learn how to not fall in the trap of the enemy. He wanted to fall into self-pity and defeat and, and all of that. Learn how to steward it. Learn how to understand the journey that God, ha that, that God has you on. Yeah. And the reason why it may not make any sense on some days, like somebody just said, God, uh, what me do in a life? Mm -hmm. What me do in a life? We deserve this, like, what me do? But you see, when you have a connection with Christ, a relationship, and you understand that He never leaves us and He will never forsake us, you also take those bad days as it working together for your good. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So I, I don't want a person to miss what you're saying. Like I, I wanted to so pause powerful. and I wanted to say it again. Like the concept of stewarding your suffering, mm. because it, when we go through something difficult, we pray for it to go away instead of praying through. Exactly. Right. So mm -hmm. I wanted to say it again because I don't want persons to miss it. When I when I said steward is suffering, I remember a friend of mine while I was going through. And keep in mind, all of this, I was a new Christian too, right? Because mm -hmm. I just got to 14 and, you know, we're still new. A friend of mine said to me that sometimes when we're praying to God for a particular thing, you a, a, a part of being obedient and stewarding your suffering is sowing into the life of someone who has that thing. <laughs> so, when, I, when I am let me tell you say community and the people that they surround yourself with is important mm -hmm. it's very very important but could they hang out around the, some of the careless people that we used to hang out with before me know God can't they move the rich nowhere could they do it <laughs> you know so I remember when I was praying about my marriage I had to start sewing into other people marriages yes and that helped my marriage mm -hmm. it helped me when i started to pray about having a child i started to sow into people's life who had children and that helped me to build my faith yes. in believing that god is going to provide me with a child of my own it was never bitterness it was never bad mind it was never jealousy it was always believing that i can't compare somebody's level 20 to my level one that's right and i have no idea of what they went through and i might just have to go through the same thing so i can't be jealous of somebody who had something there because i don't know what they got through for achieve it Amen. Amen. So the best way to steward it is to pay into their lives. Pay for a dinner. Invite them over for dinner. Host them one evening so they're not the wife now for cook. Because if you have wife, we're tired for cook too. 
was man era with tire cook so i didn't hear that scratch that from the record please your honor didn't hear it <laughs> yeah so i would um invite them over cuz i love hosting i love cooking so i would invite them over for on a on a day they don't have to cook yeah um i was so money in their in their lives i would buy things you know to make their lives easier given this is coming from me not working i keep in mind some majority of the time me not work mm-hmm. and uh, it is abandoning yourself yeah. doing this thing work is abandoning yourself many days i wanted to do many things want the ear want the this and the lord would say no you know say so and so need so and so and we don't question we come to trust god it's all right god to the ear money then no no wrong and and the first father the first me here can do it's all right can do one next time so yeah. you, ha- you have to become selfless and steward your suffering if you're going through infertility find a family that has children and so into them not 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 tit for tat not you're not doing it because you want something back but you're doing it because you're thanking god for that you provided a child for this family yes but you're happy that somebody's experiencing something that you are suffering yes and i think that's important the heart posture yeah. with which you yeah. go into this thing it's not you saying god say say i'm sewing here so you need to pay yeah. back with my yeah see that the over there is something man look here six months long i'm in a pregnant and you make me spend money i'm bad at the people and business that's not it right no. so in your in your response a while ago you actually answered one of the questions because someone was asking no guys i see the questions coming in holy we can't keep up <laughs> but we're going to try to get to all of them right so one of the questions was about how you how you manage seeing other persons having what it is that you want so i think you answered that um there was an there was one question about um but wait, hold on but wait, wait hold on i want to i want to add something to that it it wasn't easy you know it wasn't easy you know because there are many days i was driving on the road i'm going to see a pregnant lady i'm going to pull over and cry mm-hmm. it yes. wasn't easy it's just very like no i'm not a super woman i'm not a super christian where my faith is always optimized it's not it's it's, it's not the case yeah you know i i feel things too but i think my, one one of the reasons why i get over them is that i don't dwell in them i don't sit in it i feel it i say okay god me i go through this ah look when she she pregnant that hard all right god yeah. we still live together mm-hmm. make it Running along. Along. we are trust him yeah next step mm-hmm. and and i i get that because the the lord convicted me about that about that who will um staying in the staying in the pity Mhm. Self pity saying that that's not it. That's not where you're yeah. to be. You, you can acknowledge the feeling but you need to move on. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. So, um uh, try and get through some questions. <laughs> yeah, let's jump. <laughs> let's jump to the questions. So, so someone said they may have missed it but at what point did you did you decide to try IVF? I think it was IUI that you did yes. and not IVF, right? I I was not a candidate for IVF because they couldn't see my ovaries. Okay. And for you to be a candidate yeah, they have to be able to see your ovaries to pull the eggs from it. So I was not a candidate for IVF. I I didn't decide to do I well. The doctor suggested it. It was the next step. So they started you they they the first thing they did because they saw that I had the fibroids they did the surgery, the fibroids removal. And so after that they said okay, try so they give us six months to try if it didn't happen naturally i had to go back again and when i went back they put me on letrozone which is a hormone pill that excuse me the hormone pill that um helps you to conceive it produces a little bit more eggs than usual and kind of populate the area a little bit more so that the possibility of you getting pregnant increases so we tried that for six months and it, nothing happened didn't work and then the next level was iui and then when that when we suggested it what i want to tell people that sometimes as christians we can be a little bit too spirity we too spirity doctors don't only work 
God don't only work supernaturally, he works through doctors. Yeah. That's right. So you can you can get up every day and say, Father God, you're gonna give me the baby, yeah, Father. But if your womb is not in the position to conceive, then you need to say a doctor who God gave the knowledge, who we believe so God is going to be with to, to create a womb that is conducive to conceiving. And I, as much as my doctors weren't believers, you know, I always find that I be, I trusted them. I trusted them. Yeah. And I let them know that I trust them, but I also trust God. Mm -hmm. I was very open with my doctors that I'm a believer one million percent. You can't shake it off of me. That's right. It doesn't matter what they said. Even when I was doing the IUI, the second one that was successful, when the doctor did the procedure, she was like, oh, well, it's a shot in the dark because, you know, we don't know. We can't see over it. Your blood says this one thing, but we don't know what's happening. You had a miscarriage last time. You know, it could happen again and all of that. And she was like, it's a shot in the dark. You know, we just have to wait and see. And I looked and I said, I said, God is a faithful God. That's right. I said, God is a faithful God. Amen. And she smiled and she walked out. So you, people are going to look at you crazy. Mm -hmm. People are going to look at you crazy. And you have to be radical. And I can't say this enough. You have to be radical. God bless us with tools in the spirit. If you have if if a gift of praying in the spirit, pray in the spirit. There were many days. I laid prostrate in pros, pros, prostrate in my um in my apartment floor on my apartment floor, yes. just believing God for hours, and just prayed for hours, believing just by myself. There was no show, no camera, no excitement, no fanfare, no emotionalism, none of that. It was just me believing. Said God, I got to do something for you. Yes, you have to be radical about it. Whenever I hear people say and uh, speak curse words or curse, 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 you know, things over your life. That, well, you, 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 know, I'm not, you, you can't have no pity. Bind them up in front of them. Oh, Don't be afraid to rebuke it because it comes with power. The words come with power. Yes. yes. You have yes. to be very, very, very radical about your walk and your journey and the path. Very radical. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, Tommy Girl eight seven six says, I mean, she says she'd love for you to speak more on maintaining your faith while waiting on God because it has it, it can be very hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know if it's if I don't know if because my fertility journey was parallel to my newness in Christ. I was very eager. To want to know more of Christ. Mm -hmm. So while my eagerness was on this road, my yeah. infertility talent was on this road, but they were both moving at the same time. Yeah. So while I was going through my infertility challenge, I'm still very eager to learn more about this God, this God that has changed my life, this God that started to make me feel whole. So there are a couple of things that I did. I showed up every Sunday. I showed up every Sunday. Whether I have cramps, whether um, me and my husband just have an argu argument, whether me in the mood, what am I doing in the mood? I show up for lead worship at church every Sunday. Mm -hmm. and, I, I didn't, and, I, and I didn't just show up because I have a job for do. I showed up because I was thankful for where God has taken me from. Yeah. When I rolled back the curtains of my life, when I lived in sin, when I lived in the world, I did not have to be alive today. So when I get to the place sometime where I forget the immediate blessings are the things that are happening now, I, I have to roll back the curtains and say, Patrice, you remember when you go away with, go away with a man, then at the car and the man put, pull out, I speak to my ear, could and then up at Elsha, but you never did, you reach back home. Mm -hmm. I have to roll back the curtains. You remember when you were reckless and you could have HIV AIDS, but when you did a blood test to come to Canada, everything was negative. I have to roll back. And those are the things that keep me steadfast. Yeah. It, it keeps me grateful. I have to look back when so many things could have end, ended my life prematurely. 
but God had his hands on me. Yes. For though the storm are rage, yes, sir. My faith is built is, is made stronger from what God has done before for me, believing and strengthening the fact that he will do it again. Yes. So I hope that answers your question. Well, for, well, man, for me, it does. I hope it, it does okay. for you, Tommy girl. Let us know. But man, yes, it's so important for us to remain grateful. Um, for the for the things that the Lord has done. So uh, Rebecca said that you know she struggled and she's still struggling with postpartum depression. So we just want to take a second to say, Rebecca, you know our prayers are with you. We will be praying for you to to overcome this too. And don't be don't be hesitant to get the help that you need. Yeah. Yes, help is very good, Rebecca. Don't be afraid to to share. There's no shame in it because I. I, 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 I wasn't someone that struggled with depression all through my life. It was only until I moved to Canada that I, I, I realized that this is real and this is happening to me. To me, who laugh about everything. Everything is a big, everything, me, kiki, kiki. I'm me, depressed. <laughs> me. <laughs> um, your community is important. I remember when I was going through depression, my friends would sit, would sit on the phone with me in silence. Yeah. Just to be there. Yes. They would remind me to eat. They would remind me to say, oh, Patrice, remember to take a shower. It makes you feel better. They will, because when you're depressed, these are things that you don't think about. Right. You are very irrational when, you, when you're depressed. Mm -hmm. So your community, people who you can trust with your heart, people who when you share yourself with them, they don't take up them phone and go in on group chat or them to call them other friends where you want a friend with them and tell them your business. Friends we you have to ask God for solid relationships because the face walk is not you can't do it alone. Yeah. That's we weren't true. meant to. It was meant to. So okay. the next question. Yeah so uh someone saying that the um, sometimes persons would, you know, promise God something in return for a child, and they're asking if it was like that with you. Did you have to? Did Did you promise God something if He gave you a child? Absolutely not. I negotiated nothing with God because He didn't have to. Yeah. And, and and for me, I I, I don't want to say. I, I, for me, that would seem like a manipulative prayer. Like, okay, God, if you give me this, then I'll do this. Mm -hmm. I know myself. I'm human and I will fall and I will fail. Yeah. I will not hold up my end of the bargain because we are human and that's what we do. Mm -hmm. So my thing was, God, as much as I'm praying for this, I am trusting you. If this is something for me, then I will have a child. If not, my husband and I spoke about adoption and we are fine with it. We have no problem with it. So it wasn't like, okay, God, you're going to give me Samuel. And he said, you give me Samuel. No, I got to make sure I reach a church early every Sunday. I may have a Bible study. May I have a prayer me. It wasn't like that for me. The Bible actually Amen. speaks about that. It says that you, you, you shouldn't make those vows because I, 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 I'm trying to remember the scripture, but it, it strongly advises against it. So mm -hmm. do not make those vows. If you have, repent of it. It's called an inner I'm vow. Sure. And, you and know, trust God that he knows what's best for your life. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, um, so actually, and and there's a, there, there may be some single people on the life. We don't want nobody feel like the two people married, everything perfect, you know. Mm-hmm. Only don't feel like the two people married and them have children is the ideal life because some people married and would rather be single today. Mm -hmm. yeah. So be very mindful that what you what what we sometimes idolize because sometimes we we put. Sometimes our desires are louder than the voice of God. Yes. And we put ourselves in situation because everybody else is doing it and it looks good because people only put out a snippet of the good the good times. Preach. Nobody don't show when your husband lose the work, when your husband are deal with um generational curses, when you are dealing with infertility, nobody not show when you have terrible in law, nobody not show certain things. Mm -hmm. so we want people to for, 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 for like not idolize marriage and having children because I learned that it is not glamorous. Yeah. 
That's it true. is work. It's like when you get up every day and go work and you have to make an effort to reach early, empty your, your, your case file or answer your emails. It is work. Yeah. 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 yeah absolutely. And you, know, you just want to take a picture and put on social media. I'm a thing. My love said that. And put on Instagram. I show everybody say, oh, my, me and Bay, vacation. No, it's deeper than that. Yeah, indeed, indeed it is. Uh, all right. So the next question is: What advice would you give to a married couple trying to con trying to have a child, a uh, woman with PCOS, fibrosis, and endometriosis on a faith level? What would be your advice? My advice would be the same advice I I I got. Trust God. I, and, and, and I know it's so cliche, everybody says trust God, trust God, trust God. But in the way where you see yourself as enough, even without a child, trust that you are wonderfully made and God loves you and he has so many plans for your life even without a child. Trust that God can let you travel the world and experience wonderful things even if you do not have a child. Do not make your end all and your be all be having a child because even getting the child, it's another challenge. Yes, yes, yes. So yes. Be, be okay with what God has for you and also trust the doctors. If the doctors themselves so take a little pill, trust God say, the pill them going to work. Trust yes. God say, it may not work today, but eventually something might happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think you kind of covered the next question because the next question is asking, what if it never happened for you? Um, as in, you, you, you know, you went through a lot, you went through the, the, the journey, but eventually you had, you had your son. And the truth is when it never happened to me, my life is a ministry. Infertility is probably just 10% of all that I do. So it's not like me going to roll over and dead and I'm going to bury me becoming a child. My worship, my sing at church, you know, my, 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 I have my family, I cook, I own a restaurant. There are so many things that yeah. happens in my life. So I got to the place that God, even if you don't give me a child, but all right, because you have a, you, you've been showing up in so many other parts of my life that mm -hmm. if you see that me bringing in a child is not my, is, is not for me, then you're God. Are you God enough? And if yeah. you say so, I saw. I'm minutes of live with it. I'm only a servant. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. so, I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking to see if if there were any yeah, other because, questions. Yeah. Um I'm not seeing any right now. If I missed your question, please just, forgive if, me. If we miss it, just post it in the comments below the video and we'll we'll definitely respond yes. to it. We'll respond to every single question that is asked. Um, so do we ask Patrice just for final, final, yeah, word, man, final, yeah. final encouragement, Patrice, for anyone watching who is waiting? Um, I think I'll take my encouragement from Second Peter 8 to 9. The Lord is not slack. Yo, that's Thank one of the scriptures, you. man. <laughs> His promises are yea and amen. I think we get into the way a lot. Yeah. Because we are expecting God to move on our timeline and in the fashion that we want it. Yes, yes, yes. And the truth is, God is not man and he doesn't succumb to our little foo-foo thinking. My husband was never, I, my husband is not even my type when I met him. Mm, money man me like and BMW and him some of them. That me they like, yeah. Foolish, you can me. But God knew what I needed. Yes. yes, there you go. And when I met my husband, I had to surrender my desires put them one side because over the years it has not been working for me. Mm -hmm. So I can't keep on the same train if me have a loss all the time. Yes. So I decided that 
I'm going to put every part of my trust, every fiber of my being in trusting God. Yes. And so I want to encourage people to trust God. Trust the process. Spend time with God. What I did, I created a prayer wall. And every thought that I had, even while I was at work, I would write it down in a little book. I would always keep the book in my handbag. And when I get home, I would tape it on my wall. And if it was a prayer asking for something, and God comes through with it, I will date it. Mm -hmm. I will date it, and the date it happened. Because as humans, sometimes we forget, and we're very ungrateful. Yes. Sure. I will date it, and then when, any day I feel discouraged, I will go to that wall, and I will look at all the answered prayers. Mm -hmm. And I will say, God, you're such a good God. I'm operating in flesh. I'm operating, expecting you to operate on my time. Mm -hmm. When you are the sovereign God, you are the superior God. And so, you guys can take Second Peter 3, 8 to 9. I can also take First Peter 4, 12 to 19. Mm -hmm. Those two scriptures took me through. Amen. And I listen, I, I, I listen to a lot of songs. And I, 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 I just, when I just spend time with God, when I have to make school tea every day from wake up 6 o'clock to, to go to bed 11 o'clock, but that's like, no, constant, no, it's not like that. But I dedicate my life to him. Yeah. 100%. But in between, I have human interactions. I would talk about regular things. And now my people talk about it's not everything is spirited. Oh my God, everything, no. But let every interaction be one that God should be proud of. Yes. It should it should be from a real place. That's 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 what I think. Let every interaction encourage someone. Let every interaction let somebody walk away from you feeling alive. Yes. Let every interaction be be something that when somebody goes home they they, they ponder on it and say, Wow, is that something I can do? Or maybe I should try to, you know, maybe let, don't don't miss the opportunities in your suffering to minister. Amen. Don't miss the opportunities. Can you be surprised? Because sometimes it's not the place where you plant the seed that you reap the harvest. Amen. Yeah. So sometimes when you're sowing some seeds in ministry, like by just in conversation, because ministry is not putting on big event and all that. Ministry can be just having a conversation with a stranger at the bus stop. Yes. But never let that person leaving. Never let that person leave feeling less of themselves. Let them feel like, oh, I want to serve the God that she serves. Or there's something about that girl that make me want to talk to her all the time. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm gonna leave with everyone. Yeah, thank so, you so much. Thank you so much for what I'd say. Okay. You know, just as as an encouragement to persons is that. Um, you know, one of the things the Lord said to us is that the giver is more important than the gift. So yes. Our, our relationship with him is what he desires from us most. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he will accept no idols on any level. Yep. So if you're praying for something that becomes an idol, he's not going to give it to you until it is no longer. And I don't. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is true. And I don't know why they drop in my spirit, but it's almost like the Lord is saying, if there is somebody on the life who is trying to have a child, just because you want to prove somebody wrong, you might have to repent because God has a way. Yeah. You don't have to prove anything to anybody. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to prove that, oh, may I have a child too, because maybe somebody has said you can't have the child or all oh, sorts of things. You don't have to prove anything to yeah. anybody. Just surrender your heart, your spirit to God and keep it moving. As um, the guy on um, Twitter always say, ignore the noise, focus, and execute. Yeah, man, well, built on the noise, yes, that's Gordon's yeah. baby. Um, Gordon's baby, yeah. <laughs> so that, 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 that reminds me of this very important point as well. You are enough. You, the individual, like the way Absolutely. God made you, fearfully and wonderfully, Mm -hmm. You are enough. 
There's nothing mm. that you need to add to your life. So a husband won't, won't define you if you're single. A, a child won't define Absolutely. you if you're married. A house won't do it. A career won't do it. You are no, no, no. exactly the way you are right now. Absolutely. So, and people have to get that and realize that, okay, my man, I have a child. Oh, man, I'm still good. I'm good. I'm all right. Same way. Mm -hmm. And stop tying your self-worth to what you can achieve or to the children you have or the career you have. It means nothing. It really means nothing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, Pat, mm, I, have, I have no words. <laughs> I have no words. It, it's Thank such a so it's such much. a blessing. I see, I see the comments are coming in and persons are sending you their love. And oh, you know, thanks you for the live. They're they're saying it was awesome and they loved it and, <laughs> and that um you know your story reminded them of the importance of faith and that mm -hmm. is why we do what we do. Yeah. That is why this ministry exists because we strongly believe that the Lord is calling us as his people to to walk in true faith, yeah. not not just the mouth talk, not just right. saying it from our lips, but actually living lives of active faith. Right. And it's, it is it is beyond anything that that you can even fully explain. Yeah. It is something yeah. that that the Lord does on the inside. It's spirit to spirit. Inside, it's yes. not logical. Yes. It, it's, it's, it's not logical. It's not logical. It's, it's, it's not logical for us to share our story about waiting for children. And while we're still waiting. Exactly. <laughs> like, it's not logical. It's yeah. not easy. Right, and I don't want persons to think that because we're smiling, it's easy. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. There's so much yes. that goes into us getting to the point of sharing our testimony, but I'll always hold on to the fact that we overcome when we share the testimony. It's not before yes. the actual completion of overcoming is when you share the testimony. Blood of the Lamb and the word yes. of your testimony. Yes. Yes. So, yeah. So, do you have a question? No, no. Uh, I thought. Yeah. Okay. I thought it started. <laughs> what, no, no, I just wanted to, 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 to really say thanks to my sisters, my friends who stood with me <laughs> on the when I can't pray. I don't have nothing to say. Yeah. And they stay all the way in Jamaica, in the States, across Canada, and carry me. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. It, it, I don't have words to express my love for my community, my sisterhood. It, it's, 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 I can't imagine not having it. Yeah. I don't know where I would be if I did not have people who. <laughs> the other day I was at work and one of my staff said to me, Oh, you have, you have a routine, man. Like your mom called it this time. Um, <laughs> she called it that time. Karima called it that time. K Kadian called it that time. Candace called it that time. And I said, This is my life. This is this is my life. This, this, these are my these are my these are my people. These are these are my my sisters. Like even when I'm wrong, and and sometimes it can be very wrong, I'm very strong with me wrong. <laughs> Yeah. It's like yes. the poor friends, it's the it's the faith of the friends that healed him. Yeah. So, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I just want to give thanks to all of my friends who walk walk with me through it. Them see me as strong, but them have no idea that sometimes me not as strong as, <laughs> as they think. But yeah. um the joy of the Lord is my strength. So, yeah. so uh, with the God. Patrice, if it's okay before I close, I just wanted to just pray a blessing for you. And absolutely, we will pray for anyone who is waiting as well. And this is a final night. So, you yes, it to... is our final night. Yeah, just to say, Patrice, you got a song request. You hear? Yeah, someone is <laughs> asking you to sing. <laughs> <laughs> See, you get another one. They just say, bless you with a song, Pat. You know, oh so um, that, is, that is all of you, if you wish. If something comes on your heart, go ahead. But I mean, 
You can close us out with this song. Yeah, you can. You can probably close us out with this song. Okay, that's no problem. Right now. No, we're going. We're going to pray. Yeah, let's pray for us. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. So Lord, we just thank you so much. Lord, you knew that we would need to be blessed by Patrice's testimony and you knew that everyone who joined us needed to hear what she had to say. Yes, Lord. So Lord, we thank you that we thank you for your purpose and your plans. Father, you know where we are. You care about each and every one of us. There's nothing that happens by chance. So even the joining in this life, but everyone who is here is it's just a part of your design, Lord. We are joined by your spirit. So, Lord, we just thank you so much for Patrice. Father, for everything that she has been through, it has led her to this point. Someone whose faith is an example yes. for so many. A, a faith that has inspired me. A faith that will inspire persons who will watch this for years to come. Yes. So, Father, we thank you for who she is. We thank you that she's honest in her emotion. She's honest in her relationship with you. She's honest in what she has been through and is going through. Yes. And, Father, we thank you that she has been faithful, that she has stewarded. She has been a good steward of her suffering. Yes. So, Father, we just bless her. We bless her, Lord. We release a blessing, a special blessing to minister yes. this testimony, to share this testimony of hope, of faith, of miracles from a God who is just an amazing God. So, Father, we pray a blessing on her marriage. We seal it. We cover it under the blood of Jesus. Yes. We declare it strong. The darts of the enemy will not penetrate the barrier that you have around their marriage in the name of Jesus. And, Father, we pray for Samuel, her son, that he will be strong, that he will be of good courage, that he will be a man after your own heart. And I pray, Lord, that for everything that they have been through as a family, that you will bind them together, that you will provide for every need, every financial, every spiritual, every emotional need will be met yes. in the name of Jesus. And I pray, Lord, that you will just consecrate them. You will just shield them from harm, from anything that will seek to derail your plans and purpose for them, Lord. And we just thank you so much for everything that would have just taken place, all the persons who have been impacted. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Hallelujah. Give you thanks, Lord. I love you, Lord, for your mercies never fail me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up till I lay my head. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. In all my life, you have been faithful. In all my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have held me through the fire and in darkest nights. You were close like no other. 
I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. Yeah, 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 yeah. And all my life you have been faithful. Ooh. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Cause your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Cause your goodness is running after, it's running after me. And your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Cause your goodness is running, it keeps running after me. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. Every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God, my soul will sing of the goodness of God, oh, my heart will sing of the goodness of God. Oh. Hallelujah. Thank you so, so, so much, sis. As you as you were singing, it's like I heard the Lord saying that there is somebody being ministered to in that what they're praying for as you're singing, it is happening for them. Amen. No problem. Thank Thank you you so much, Pad. <laughs> Say hi to everybody. Oh, oh my God, you baby, oh, baby. Oh, 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 to go take it <laughs> Rosa Samuel. And thank you guys so much for joining us. Be Say hi to your husband for us. Yes. Yes, I will. And guys, as, <laughs> as you're listening to this, just remember that it is God above all else. As much as you are waiting for children, submit and surrender wholly and completely to the Lord and trust yeah. that his will for your life is perfect. Amen. All right, amen. So bless you all. Thank you for joining us. And I want to encourage if if you can follow me at Patrice underscore Gilman, not to because I want any followers, because I encourage people and because I will pray for you. If you want me to pray for you, you can always go into my DMs yeah. and um we can pray. And I've 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 fostered many friendships from my DMs from people that I don't know, I've never met them. And uh, I just maintain good relationships with them, help them through seasons, and sometimes they turn around and help me. You know, and they end up helping me. 
You know what I mean? So yeah. um, don't be afraid. Send me a DM. You want me to pray if you want to talk, if you have questions, if you just want to vent. I'm here. Yeah. Same yeah. for us. Reach out to us anytime. Anytime. All right. Okay. Thank you. Bye. All right. Bye-bye.